Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. We are learning the Word of God. God's Word is the only living book in the world. And when Paul taught the Word of God, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration and of the power of the Spirit of God. In the Spirit and in the power. Then verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Remember, our theme on all of these lessons are going to be the only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And this is what Paul is teaching us, not the wisdom of men, but the wisdom of God. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we can come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace and help in time of need. And thy grace is sufficient for every need. So we're asking for every true believer today that we will be filled with the knowledge of thy will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we will walk worthy of thee unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of thee, strengthened with all might according to thy glorious power, under all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness giving thanks unto thee, which hath made us meet to be partaker of thy inheritance in the saints of light that has delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sin. May every person that is truly a child of God Pray this prayer daily for our nation and for this universe, and that every word that we give out will melt the hearts of every person that is lost. We're asking for 100-fold. And when five people obey the word, 100 people can be chastened, and they will fall by the sword of the Word of God. One hundred people praying, thy word says that ten thousand enemies will fall by the sword that will chase them. God will do this for this universe. We're asking for one hundred fold. And we thank God that this is his will, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against these truths. In Christ's name we pray, amen. This is the burden that God has laid on my heart. For every true believer to pray that prayer in Colossians chapter 1. And that we will see 100 fold. Because we must be clean vessels fit for the master's use. He says to be ye holy as I am holy. 
And as we're learning in these lessons, only the Word of God will bring forth fruit. Only the Word of God will guide us to all the principles that He has in this book. And this is one of them right here that every true believer... Now remember, if you're not a child of God, none of these affect you until you are born again. He says in 1 Corinthians 19, 6, verse 19 and 20, You're not your own, for you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. And now the reason that you have to know this is you have to know that until you are born again, you cannot appropriate these and live by faith because you must become a child of God. And how do we do that? By believing. The spirit faculties of the spirit are the spiritual faculties that live within us after we become a child of God. And you have to know these truths because if you don't know these truths, you can never be born again. And we are, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, and that is 1 Corinthians. This is why we are, because 1 Corinthians 15, 3, and 4 is the gospel. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12 teaches us this truth. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And this one body, Christ, is the head. The body of believers are to have perfect unity, just like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Co-equal in everything that happens when we call upon Him and appropriate His Word by faith. But until you are born again, you do not have the spiritual faculties of the Spirit. We only have a soul and a body. If we die without Christ, our, body, our soul goes to a place of torment. Our body goes back to dust from where it came. After we have the Spirit of God living within us, then we are complete. When we take our last breath, our soul and our spirit go to be with the Lord. We are carried up into heaven by the angels. And then our bodies are going to be raptured. That means we're going to meet him in the clouds. Every true believer, we're going to be in outer space. When we learn the lessons on John, we see that his book teaches salvation. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John teaches us how to live that salvation. And the book of Revelation that he wrote is the word from outer space. We're going to be lifted up. If it should happen today, every true believer that's living, the ones that have gone back to dust, the body, they're going to be raised first. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this is in First Thessalonians chapter 4, and he says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You must be born again, and the, he is the head of the body. He has a twofold headship, the head of the body and the head of all creation. And he teaches us in Philippians also, we need to know these Bible verses so we cannot fear death. 
You never have fear after you become a child of God. You live by faith. Worry causes 38 diseases. And when you listen to this word, you have perfect peace. He says in Philippians chapter 3, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change this vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working thereby, he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. This is the good news. And the body and the head has to be united. And we see in crucifixion, he atones our sins by the blood. This is the good news. The gospel means good news. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. And then it teaches us that it is the blood, Ephesians 2, 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You see, you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. This is in 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. You must believe in the blood to be saved. You must believe these truths to be saved. And let me give you this Truth concerning the spiritual faculties of the Spirit are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. Because we have to have an intercessor to go to our Heavenly Father for us. And He's praying night and day for every believer. And this Spirit receives impressions of outward and material things through the spirit and the soul. This is one of the most important lessons that you're ever going to hear because you must be born again. And now listen at this. A healthy soul and spirit need a healthy body and if that body is given over to carnality and lust, the soul and spirit suffer, and the whole man becomes spiritually sick. This is what's wrong with the world today. We must be holy as he is holy, we cannot be the same person after we're a child of God. We cannot live like the world. We cannot act like the world. And he says in 1 Thessalonians, now you can pray this prayer. You can pray every promise that he has, every exceeding great and precious promises, and obey it by believing all things whatsoever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. If my words abide in you. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 is, And the God of all peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray that my spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until the coming of of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I did not give you the Bible verse that I gave you in John 15, 7. And this is the words that he wants you to obey today. And he says, I, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. John 15, 7. This is what God desires for every true believer. Do you believe in the blood of Christ? 
You know, when Nicodemus came to Jesus, he said to him in John chapter 3, verse 2, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for you could not do, no man can do these miracles that thou hast done except God be with him. Only God can perform miracles. Only God can be worshipped, true and living God. So let's go to chapter 3 of John. He tells us in this book, when Nicodemus came to him, now remember, Nicodemus was a religious man. You see, you can't be saved by religion, and you cannot be saved by organizations. He says to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, except a man be born of water, that is the word of God, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. You will never die. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on you. You see why God has called me to give this to you today. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is his living word. That's why he hasn't come. He's long suffering, not willing that any should die without Christ. He takes no pleasure in the death of a wicked person because he knows they go to an eternal hell. He sent his only son to come to this earth and die for you and for me. And you cannot have this love that he has given us and hate another person because he teaches us in his word that and you have to know these truths and you have to know where they are he says in first john chapter 3 verse 15 whoso hateth his brother if you hate anybody you are a murderer if now listen at this whoso hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in them. Now, to understand this great love, we must turn to, once again, this divine nature that we have is Second Peter 1, 4. His divine nature bestowed by the Holy Spirit is a nature which possesses in it the love of God. We are to have deep love one for another. And here they are in Peter. Now this is his word, and this is not my words. He says in 1 Peter chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 22, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. You can't be saved. First of all, you have to believe the word and you have to obey it and do what his word says before you can be a child of God. Grace through faith in the word, you have salvation. You have to obey it. Seeing you have purified your souls by obeying the truth through the spirit of God. It has to be through Everything's done now after I'm a child of God has to be done through the Spirit and the Word. They can't work away from each other. They cannot be separated. We as a body of believers has to have this same love. And then he says, in obeying the truth through the Spirit, now that's the only way you can have this, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Real love. 
God's love has two basic elements, a desire to serve, to please God, and to fellowship. And if I don't have fellowship with the Father and with the Son, I lose that fellowship with God after I become a child of God. And then I want you to memorize this verse. Sin, you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Why am I here for you? God loves you and I love you. I do this for the glory of God and not for money for almost 40 years. Soon I will be 80 years old and I know what the abundant life is and I love you no matter who you are, no matter where you are. God loves you no matter who you are, no matter where you are. And he never quits loving us. Never. I am to love the way he loves. And then in verse 24, well, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. This book is forever. How much time do we spend in this book every day? That's the only way. He says to meditate, Joshua 1, 8. Meditate on this word day and night and do according to all that I have commanded thee. Then I will make thy way prosperous and then I shall have good success. That's prosperity that is everlasting. That is success that's everlasting. Only those things that are eternal are important. So then he says in verse 25, now this is 1 Peter, you've got to memorize these and live them. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is what God wants. This is life eternal, that ye may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17. And then I want to just give you one. I have to go back to a lot of these because you must believe in the blood. You must believe in the virgin birth that the Holy Spirit conceived Christ by the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit and the blood that came into her womb because you have to have blood to have life. We have life for this life, but we don't have life for the next life until the Spirit and the blood gives us that light, that life, eternal life. And I just want to t read what this is. We must get back to the Bible because it has answers to every problem. This is God's divine program for instructions and warning for each of us. Now, this is the basic program for daily living. God says, in Deuteronomy 6.6, 6. this is for every person living. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Our heart is our intellect, our emotions, and our will. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Now I'm going to sing another little song for you, which I can't sing, but I can make a joyful noise to the Lord. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, that I might not sin, that I might not sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart. If we don't know the word of God, we cannot live it. John 15, 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And Revel in Psalm 12, verse 6. These words are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, 
purified seven times. We are to reverence this word. We are to live it. And we are to obey it. That's the only way of blessings for this world. That's the only way of receiving the blessings that God wants us to have. If we have sin in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. So we are, as he has done when he went back to heaven, by his own blood, Christ entered into the holy place, Hebrews 9, 12. He had to get, go back to heaven with his own blood, and now he's there preparing a place for us. Now, you have to memorize this verse, John eleven twenty five 25, and 26. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, your body is just made up of the elements of the dust. We're all the same in his sight. Every person is the same in God's sight. He loves us all the same. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And you can use all of these lessons. You can copy all of them and teach them to another person. Every person that's listening, you can do what God's Word says to teach these diligently to our children. Hide these in our hearts that we will not sin against God. His life is the abundant life. His life is the prosperity and success that comes from obeying what He has given us. No love like His love. He loves you no matter what you do, and He never quits loving you. God is love.